Colts taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. First open back in 2008, there's a look at Lucas Oil Stadium here in downtown Indy. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Indianapolis Colts. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we take a look at the Colts entering play. They come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. And the way they played last week defensively, you look at the tape, it looks like they had extra guys on the field, and they thoroughly shut down that offense. Meanwhile, for the Bengals here, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes it actually works to your advantage. Now you've got to band together your team, the us-against-the-world mentality. Let's see if they can use it and get a victory. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Here come the Bengals. And CD, of course, it's Joe Burrow out of LSU at quarterback. And I'll bet right now just one thought in his mind. Win, win the game. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, without a doubt. He played pretty well. I mean, he didn't turn over the ball in terms of interceptions, no, two right? touchdown passes. Two touchdown week. passes. But when your team doesn't win, that's just hollow. And the best quarterbacks don't care about anything but whether or not their team won. They'll start with the option. The numbers for Mixon last week. There isn't a coach alive who wouldn't like those numbers. Well over 100 yards and a touchdown, too. Partner, I think all the coaches are in that great coaching box in the sky would take those numbers. <laughs> so dead or alive. Either way, they would take they that would kind take. of production. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. That one taken in by T. Higgins. Burrow. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. But we can talk about it like it's just a basic route, but how about the timing on this one? Lined up on the right, runs a deep in route, and how about the throw? Right on the money. Bam! Puts it right in there and on his hands. Nice completion. Really good pickup. They go play action with Burrow. He gets this in the hands of Mixon. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. Not much there, only a yard. Brings up second and now Burrow to throw on second down. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Joe Burrow sacked. I spent a lot of extra time preparing for this game watching this offensive line because they gave up five sacks last week in their loss. They just gave up another one now. They don't seem to be working together as a cohesive unit, right? Four guys might have it right, but the fifth guy is giving something up. They've got to find a way to all get on the same page. 
So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. He finds his running back, Mixon. And he gets this to the 48, but no further. Well short of the line to gain. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area, that they want him involved. Just as you said, they want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Fourth down, Matt Hawk is on to punt. They'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they will be let out by their 6-3 quarterback. And it felt like in watching the game tape, he got everyone involved last week. He know? was a manager. He really was. That's a great way to put it because they ran the ball some, they threw it accurately. One touchdown pass, so he didn't, you know, break the bank doing that, but he didn't throw any interceptions. That's the bottom line. That's why a defense loves a quarterback like that. Doesn't put them in bad situations. Number the numbers for him from a week ago. 20 carries, 102 yards, and a touchdown. And the way they ran the ball last week has to bring a smile to the faces of the entire coaching staff because not only are they seeing a back pile up yardage, they're seeing an offensive line in sync, and that bodes well this late in the season. Oh, he's got a little daylight! And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. All right, I got to ask you, with these RPOs, essentially the quarterback has three options, right? So what's different from that versus the triple option that we see the service academies run at the college level? As a general rule, the triple option at the college level, most things are called outside of the quarterback faking it to the runner and then keeping it himself and maybe having a trail back. What I mean is, in the NFL, that option to throw the football all comes about organically. It's a natural deal based on reads. In college, if you're going to throw the football off a triple option, you've actually called that play. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. Behind the chain, second and 12. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. And incomplete. Makes it third down and 12 yards to go. On third down, he'll drop to throw. He'll drop this down to Taylor. And he'll go down to the ground at the 39, and obviously that's well short of the first. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tackles. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. Then we'll get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it. And occasionally, you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. 
also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Number 20, Trey Hendrickson, the one who gets him on the ground. Trey Hendrickson on the tackle. One yard gain. Brings up second. On second down, here's Mixon. And no room that time. Getting it to about the 46. Joe Mixon. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. He'll find his running back, Joe Mixon. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Seven yards on the play, and it'll be fourth down. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Here's Matt Hawk now as he'll kick it away for the second time. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. As the Colts offense makes their way out, we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC. And with a final fortnight of games upon us, teams jockeying for position. Some of these games really starting to take enormous importance as they always do this time of year. I like how you use fortnight. I am impressed. It means two weeks if I'm not mistaken, correct? But how about exactly what you're talking about? Going down the stretch, how much importance is placed on these games? Look, everyone talks about every game's important. <laughs> when you get to this time of year, maybe that importance gets quadruple. And that's where we are right now to see who can make their last run, their last push to get into the playoffs. On the draw is Taylor. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he's taken down. Back in his own seven. Hassan Reddick racking up sack number 12 for him on the year. It's a team game, but sometimes individuals do stand out, don't they? How about that for a twofer? Tackle for a loss on the running play on the previous down, and then comes right back and gets a sack. The Colts send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. And just a net of 31 here, 40 yard punt, nine on the return. And the Bengals will take over in terrific field position. They'll come up now with a clock showing three seconds to go here in the first. Mixon with a first down carry. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. No score after one on EA Sports. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Now Joe Mixon. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage.
coach, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Here's Matt Hawk now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. The partner just looking at some of the struggles they've had this season. The playoffs are not in their future. As they start to peer toward the offseason, what moves might they make? I think the running back position. And I know we talk all the time about the NFL being a passing league. But the teams that run the ball effectively, they're the ones that go deep into the playoffs and go to the Super Bowl. They have to upgrade here. And you and I both know in recent years in the draft, people have shied away from taking a runner early. But there's that special one there. I say they go get him. Second and 12. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. They'll find Paris Campbell. That's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving. Scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Now a play fake here on first down. Over the middle here, it's Hilton. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. And those linemen, of course, can't be more than a yard downfield when a pass is thrown, and they might have been able to call that on a couple of guys there. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. That's complete to Jonathan Taylor out of the backfield. It's a gain of six on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. To Jonathan Taylor. A gain of six brings up second and nine at the 42-yard line. Now this is Hilton on the receiving end. Jermaine four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. A gain of four. Brings up third and five. They'll look to throw again. Take it in by the tight end, Doyle. And he is going to have a Colts first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Back to throw again. Open man is Trey Burton. And uh, he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Taylor. Works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Now back to throw. This one into the hands of Burton. And he's got another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Bengals 14. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. 
You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. The Colts with a first red zone opportunity of the ball game. It's first and 10 at the 14. He'll look to throw. He'll find Taylor. That's complete. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. They'll contain him to just 4. Second down. 4 yards on the pickup. Second and 6. This is caught. Watkins. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown. Indianapolis. Sammy Watkins. His fourth touchdown on the year as his guys are first onto the scoreboard here this afternoon. So a nice touchdown pass for the rookie there. And, you know, as they go down the stretch, look, they're not a playoff team. This is just confidence building and growth time for him, right? Yes, yeah, the game within the game, isn't it? Because every team wants to win all games on their schedule. But the development of this rookie quarterback is paramount for this team. So you're exactly right. Every rep, doesn't matter what the game, what the situation, what the score, valuable for him, valuable for his team as they look towards next year. So after the touchdown, here's Blankenship kicking off. Taking in at the three. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Bengals take over first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach... Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? A gain of six there on first. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their ball, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. First down, Bengals. From the gun to give to Mixon. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Second and one. Burrow on play action. Open man is Higgins. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Burrow's pass complete to T. Higgins. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. It's a gain of eight. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. He's got his man, boy. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. Burrow to Boyd there for the Cincy first. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, 
We'll call this play significant. Took nearly the entire first half, but a first red zone opportunity for him here. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Sack number seven for him on the year. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. This will be caught inside the 10. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? He gets this in the hands of Mixon. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. A 29-yard attempt. Gonzalez's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the field goal trying to find one to get you into the end zone, get you six? The Colts take over first and 10 at their own. Now we see Sammy Watkins getting ready to go again on offense. Well, he's within shouting distance of a 1,000-yard season. Going to need a pretty good finish, though, if he wants to reach that mark. Well, I like how you phrased it, partner. He is within shouting distance. If he stays on this pace, he's got a shot at it. But he needs a big game in there, right, to make sure that he gets it. So you know that during the week, in practice, and, and look, he asks for the ball all the time anyway. He's really going to ask for the ball and let his quarterback know he's open. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. And toss up for it, and this is going to be caught. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. throw here on first down. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. It leads to second and ten. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Now a timeout signal for, and they'll get it with ten seconds to go before halftime. The heavy set out there, three tight ends in the formation for third and three. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Line of scrimmage the 31 now on first and 10. So we reach intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. Some critical games going on as teams fight for those final playoff berths. Let's get you around the NFL here in a busy week 16. We'll start up at TIAA Stadium in Jacksonville. And it's the Jaguars who have the lead in the second quarter. Two touchdown passes there for Dak Prescott. From there, we're off to check out another game. And they were winners in that one over the visiting LA Chargers. Kirk Cousins leading the way in the victory with three touchdown passes. 
Lastly, let's get you to MetLife Stadium to see what's happening with the Giants at home in East Rutherford. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. A touchdown pass there for Derek Carr. Meanwhile, in our game, not a lot of offense to go around. 7-3 is our score. Will we see things open up in the second half? To find out, we get it back to our guys in the booth, Brandon God and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Rodgers on the return. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Colts take over first and 10. At their own now come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. Second and ten. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Seven brings up third. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. They'll get that one to Taylor complete. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. The Colts send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Here again comes Joe Burrow in the offense for the Bengals. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with a quarterback on the ground so much. Yeah, he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. And yeah, they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. I think it's pretty evident. We can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. On second down, Burrow able to find Higgins. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really on to something there. In this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. And that play, it wound up losing yardage. The last completion actually lost a yard, so now they'll need to convert on third down. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And Burrow loses the football. Joe Burrow is fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. Matt Hawk now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he's able to get it out of there. On the return, it's Rodgers. 
A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And the Colts are set up well as they take over first and 10 on the short side of the field. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef, that they can let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Looking to throw. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Hassan Reddick, he's the culprit, and that is now his 13th sack of the season as his great year continues. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely, going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop, something big to knock them back on their heels? A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop them here on third down. They'll set up a throw. And they'll pressure again, and down he goes again. Gino Atkins in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. They were trying to set up that screen, trying to get that screen to formulate. Took too long. Ends up taking a sack, and that leads you to a couple of other questions. Number one, why don't you just get rid of the football near the screen, guys, so that you don't take an interception? But really, the big one, they just took everything away, and he was really kind of flummoxed on that play and ended up taking the sack. The Colts send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Cincinnati set to take over once again. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A well-executed 22-yard gain. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. They'll run on first down. Mixon. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. Xavier Rhodes brought him down. Again, it's Mixon. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down at the Colts 26. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Mixon. Oh, good move. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. That one good for ten yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. At the Colt 17-yard line. And now they will throw it with Burrow. Slam pass to Bull. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Tyler Boyd, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bengals have taken the lead. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie. Because usually your rookie season, 
is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more, reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. And he's got it up and through. Five plays there on that drive. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Gonzalez on to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Colts take over first and 10. And he's set to go on offense once more. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. He's brought down at the 31. 10 yards on the pick. Again, it's Taylor. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Good for a Colts. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. They'll look to throw here. This will be incomplete. The physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Incomplete. Brings up second and ten. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. He'll drop this down to Taylor. And he's going to be taken down at the 39, clearly short of the first by a few yards. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a fourth down? send out their punter as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. Joe Burrow trots out again with the rest of his offense. He is looking to help his team build their lead after trailing at halftime. They've got to like the spot they're in right now. They have to love it, but as you and I both know, cliche alert coming here. You're only as good as your last possession, but I think that they like, as you said, the spot they're in and how confidently they're playing at this point. Uh, but again, just a one possession lead, looking to expand oh, yeah. that now. Oh, and he's got a Bengals first down as the tackle made just shy of the 30. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? to mix it on first down. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. On the carry. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. It's a pickup of six. Brings up Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Got an open man, that's C.J. Uzama. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Give him 14 on that one, and a first down. First down, Bengals. Here's Burrow. There's a short one caught by Uzama. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. One quarter remains here in week 16. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Seven. Second and five. Now Burrow. 
That's taken in by Higgins. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. A gain of six there on first. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. At the 30 throwing again, it's Burrow. And his throw is going to be incomplete. T. Higgins is the intended target. And it's third and four. Again, it's Burrow. He'll drop this one down to mix it. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Oh, no, he lost the football. Burrow's pass. Fumble on the play. Recovered by the offense. When that ball popped free, we could hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone to the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on it. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. They're passing here. Joe Burrow firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches wanted to catch the football first. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Brings up fourth down. A big one coming now for the kicker, Zane Gonzalez. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. Gonzalez's kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13 7. Bengals 13. Colts 7. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half moon grins right now. They feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden they're down. At their own 20 And as this offense makes their way back out, it's AFC playoff race time as we give you a look. And right now these guys they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. First and 10. At the now they'll throw here out of the gun. Catch made here by Campbell. And he'll get nothing out of that one. No gain there on the completion. Second and 10. Brings up second and 10 at the 37-yard line. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 16 yards, a first down. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there for the offense, 
They're hoping that that's something that they can jump start with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 47. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He's got Jack Doyle. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. From the late to Jack Doyle. 10 yards on the pickup. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he's going to be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bengals' 28. And it goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there, I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. down he'll drop to throw this one into the hands of Burton and inside the 20 before he's brought down give the Colts 13 yards in a first down tell you what he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long that throw no different yeah a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw I think he looks at it as I can do it so it's not that big of a deal to me and I'm gonna keep firing a good pick up there eight yards on the first down completion brings up second and two at the eight yard line they'll run it here this is Marlon Mack and he'll be brought down this time at the five yard line it's a three yard pickup and that sets up first and goal First and goal at the five-yard line. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. They hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Watkins, the intended receiver, but it'll be second and goal. Leads to second and goal. Taylor. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Colts can now take the lead if they convert the extra point. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. And this puts him on top by a penny. It's 14-13. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Right, so after the touchdown, here's Blankenship kicking off. Fielded just outside the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Bengals take over first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. So Burrow and the Bengals trailing 14-13, 2.22 on the clock. Deuces wild. A possible crippling loss to their playoff status in the balance, barring a late score. <laughs> on first and 10, Joe Burrow. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A good pickup there, eight yards on the first down completion. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And his pass incomplete. After the incompletion here now, third and two. It's third down. Now it's Burrow. He'll find his running back, Joe Mixon. 
And he is going to have a Bengals first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. That gets him the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And Burrow going to throw again. Another connection between the two. This one good for two. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. DeForest Buckner in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. pass on that last play and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down they'll look to throw and he can't get a throw away he's taken down now yeah, the Bengals are going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Colts are going to get the football in outstanding field position. So certainly not the way that they were hoping that possession would end, failing to convert on fourth. And now they've got to make sure that they keep their poise, they keep their confidence. Just because it didn't work once doesn't mean if they get that same situation later that they shouldn't go for it again. In. The defense feels great, but the offense, they can't be despondent. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. And they'll indeed take a knee. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. And they take a knee. And how about this finish? Able to take a knee, run out the clock, and close this game out by one point. You talk about <laughs> how many, many coaches we talked to. They all said to say, all I want to do is win by one point. That got tested in this one. Yep, and that cliche rings true. A single penny separates this one. So this one winds up in Indianapolis victory. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game. No turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defense is a put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offense is spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So for the Colts, their hopes of a 500 season stay alive as they move to 7-8 and eight now on the year. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Houston Texans. Meanwhile, for the Bengals, their playoff hopes take a big hit as they fall to 8-7. and seven. And they'll be at home for one next week as the Baltimore Ravens come to town. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.